Hello, I'm Steve with Fitness for Five. Uh, happy to be back here again with Dr. Nario of Biointegrative Health Center. Uh, you can check them out online and all that they do. It's Biointegrative Health Center in Reno. So welcome, doctor. Hi, Steve. Thank you for inviting me again. Okay, so let's talk about, the, I mean, this is something that um, is especially not only this time of year, but with all of the fears and virus and shutdown and all this could maybe have more of an impact on people's lives today. So uh, seasonal affective disorder. What is it? Seasonal affective disorder, SAD. What is it? Well, Steve, it's, yeah, as you mentioned, SAD, SAD. The thing here is gloomy days and winter blues are here. As we, yeah, right now we have like a ton of snow here in, in, in Reno. And this affects the various levels of people in our society. And this is when the, the, the season comes in, darker season when there's less sun, like winter or um, late fall, that people starts to feel uh, more of the, the anxiety and depression that comes along with the season. And this is related to the changes that, that occurs there. And I just did mention about the sun, but also of course, sometimes the holidays that passes by, sometimes it brings uh, a, a certain stimulus that triggers anxiety and depression in, peop in people. And it begins and ends in, in a cyclic type of pattern. And the common presentation always starts uh, in, of course, as we always will hear during the winter months, because there's no sun and it's always in the dark. And as you mentioned, and it's the time of fear, it's hiding in caves right nowadays, wherein we try to quarantine ourselves from COVID and this aggravates the whole situation. Hmm. So yeah, I know, you know, in winter it gets dark at five in the summer it gets dark at nine. And then you have all these lockdowns on top of that. So how um, prevalent is uh, seasonal affective disorder? That is a good question. Now we go into the, the numerical part of, the, of this discussion, wherein 5% of the population experiences this every year. If you think about it, pretty small, right? Not if you're talking about 10 million Americans. That's the equivalent of that. And of this 5%, at least 10 to 20% would feel mild symptoms. It's not like a full-blown anxiety or depression uh, presentation, but half or majority of these, these, these people who are affected has either major depressive disorders or anxiety disorders. That's why when you have these conditions, it increases your risk to have sad or seasonal affective disorder. And anxiety and depression, you have to remember, two of the most common mental health illnesses or issues in the US. And it's really worse if you have chronic um, disease from the start, then you add SAD on top of it. Well, actually, I think 5% is a lot, uh, a lot to suffer from this. So, um, what do you do? I mean, you got uh, insurance, there's hospitals, uh, the conventional ways of treating this with the different therapies. What, what, what are the options on that side of the equation? Well, that's a good question. Um, the, the best thing is first, I wanna make sure that our audience knows how to identify these symptoms. So as, I, as SAD or SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder, comes in a sad presentation. Sad presentation meaning you have low energy, you're moody most of the day, losing interest in regular activities, insomnia, appetite fluctuations, difficulty focusing and concentrating, feeling hopelessness, worthless, guilty, and also worst case scenario, suicidal thoughts. That's why this, these symptoms you have to remember needs to go along with the ongoing season of la latter fall or early winter in order for you to say it's seasonal affective disorder. 
Now you mentioned about treatments. Um, the ones that I really want to put out there is if you go to your regular doctor, like your family doctor or even a psychiatrist, what will they do to this? Number one would be antidepressants. Antidepressants, as the most common one out there would be, and you're familiar probably with this, is Wellbutrin. And the thing here is we only suggest for somebody to use that if they're in the severe state of SAD. And as, as I mentioned a while ago, it's cyclic. That's why sometimes our the practitioners would even start the treatment even before the season starts. And it takes several weeks. You have to understand antidepressants are very slow in terms of action. And they also offer simple, uh, I guess, non-medical or prescription ways such as psychotherapy, wherein they involve cognitive behavioral therapy, changing thoughts, learning healthy adaptive mechanisms to cope and how to manage stress, and even light therapy. So that's, I, I'm sure uh, you've heard of this before. This is phototherapy, and this is a special box or a light that is in a, is in, in a package. And just to make sure, don't be holding a flashlight in your face. That won't work. This is a special device, and it, it, you expose yourself to bright lights within the first few hours of waking up each day, and it mimics the natural outdoor light uh, like the sun and its appearance, thus changing and improving the brain neurotransmitters that we we have that affects depression and anxiety. Well, it sounds like um, those symptoms would be pretty obvious. Um, so your clinic is an integrative health clinic. Mm -hmm. So what are the type of alternatives that people can seek out for something like this? That's a good point, Steve. That's why alternative therapy is always the best way to go as your first line of defense. But depression, let me start with that, because since I mentioned about depression and anxiety, dep depression is something that's related to the gut. And the gut has what we call has microbiome or gut bacteria that it contains. And you always would hear your second brain is your gut. For the reason that the gut is also responsible for regulating the neurotransmitters in your brain, such as when you have depression, you have low serotonin. And how, how does that go? Whatever we eat goes to our microbiome or our gut bacteria, and the gut bacteria produces enzymes, neurotransmitters <clears throat> that the body or the brain will use. That's why what we eat becomes what we uh, actually use to power our own bodies. And that's why the best way to help this is starting on a vegetarian diet, plus probiotics. Actually, in studies, have lower incidences of depression and anxiety. <clears throat> Actually, just one month of use of this combination had shown to lower symptoms. And another one would be avoiding the inflammatory type of diet. The thing here is, I'm talking about uh, the favorites of everybody, soda, refined grains, meat, again, a plant-based diet has lowered inflammatory markers almost 30% in less than two weeks because of the antioxidants that it has. Another one would be aspartame. So I'm sure you're familiar with the little packets uh, for natural, or I mean uh, artificial sweeteners and drinks. And this also has been proven to increase depression because it affects the dopamine and serotonin in our brains. And I mentioned about anxiety. Anxiety, natural approaches for it would be sweet orange essential oils like aromatherapy or you can even rub it on your wrist it lowers down the anxiety than better than prescription medis medicines and it also has less sedations less side effects and provides the patient more energy and another one would be lavender that's something that you can use lavender actually has been used head to head with the medicine named lorazepam and they were compared six weeks in a study and it has shown that lavender actually had a better effect in lowering down anxiety and has not even produced a hangover effect, which lorazepam does in relation to also the higher abuse that you, you attach to it. That's why natural remedies, first line, our first line remedies that we want to use rather than prescription meds, the approach is actually leading to us going back into our happy outlook in life 
and we will kick that winter blues out the door. Wow. I didn't know that the gut was related to depression and lavender is a tea. So uh, thank you, doctor. Appreciate your time. We look forward to next week in our next topic. Thanks for being with us. Dr. Nario, Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. Thanks, Steve.